we're going to make a galette crust this morning. And the difference between a galette crust and a pie crust is that pies are usually a little more formal. They're uh, pie crusts, they're, they're like fluted around the edge and they have these designs on the top or, or you know, they're woven, basket woven and all sorts of stuff and they're highly intimidating. A galette crust, on the other hand, is you simply roll the pie crust into kind of a circle shape. You put the filling on the inside, you bring the sides of the galette together, and you have this rustic edge with an opening in the middle for um, your filling to show through. I've used galette crusts for everything, pies, pot pies, all sorts of stuff, basically because it's so much easier and less stressful. I am not a perfectionist. I uh, decided to leave that behind. Um, I don't think I ever was a perfectionist. And if you're intimidated by pies or whatever, this is a good way to make a delicious pie without worrying about the fancy presentation. If you don't want to make your own uh, crust, that's totally fine. These crusts also work just, just great. Um, two crust sides, they're uh, rolled up and you just unroll them and you do the same Thing. What I like about uh, making my own crust is that I can then take off a chunk and make my um, crust whatever size I like. I like to make uh, smaller size pies that fit fit in this. It's a, I don't know, six or seven inch um, cast iron. It's just a good size. I take this recipe I'm going to give you and I, you know, use half for one pie, half for the other. And uh, it's just the right size to fit a can of pie filling. This is Dollar Tree pie filling. So you can end up having, bringing two smaller pies, two different fillings, um, or a bunch of small pies, or you just use all the dough and make one big pie with two fillings. It's really up to you and the size of the pie you want and all those variables. I usually get my uh, galette crusts made up ahead of time and I put them in a jar. You can put them in a flat pack in a um, uh, baggie or whatever that seals closed. And this is handy for me if I want to make something, I just pull it out. Basically, it's just all the dry ingredients put into this jar and then closed shut with the um, directions of what, what ingredients I need to add. This recipe is originally from the Deborah Madison book, Vegetarian Cooking for Everyone. It is a great recipe, freely available online also, and has really stood the test of time for me over the years. So let's get started. First, let's do the flour. Calls for two cups of flour. So I put in a cup of wheat and I put in a uh, cup of all-purpose flour. A tablespoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt. And that's it for your dry ingredients. At this point, if you wanted to store it for later, you could put it in the jar, no problem. I'm gonna whisk this together so it's all well combined. And then I'll add our butter and our um, cold water. The recipe calls for 12 tablespoons of butter. So I looked up what 12 tablespoons of what butter was, and it's three quarters of a cup, which is basically um, one full uh, stick plus another half stick. So I'm going to cut these up into chunks and throw them into the um, flour mixture right now. Here's what it looks like. The butter has to be cold. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into the flour mixture right now, just like that. And I have my handy dandy little, I think this is a pastry cutter, I'm not sure, pastry blender. It's got kind of a sharp edge here. So I'm just gonna use this and start um, blending the uh, butter with the flour until it kind of has the consistency of pebbles. I'll be back in a few. Here's what it looks like. It's crumbly. I kind of put my hands in there at the last minute to just finish the process. And I'm gonna start adding cold water. The recipe calls for a third to half a cup of water and that just depends. <laughs> when I want cold water, I just get some ice out of the freezer and throw it into some regular water and just get started that way. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in. I'm not using a measuring cup, just a little bit. Maybe that's a quarter of a cup. I'm just going to mix it up. Basically, you want the uh, dough to hold together. And I think the uh, differing amounts, uh, whole wheat flour needs more moisture than white flour. Sometimes it's elevation. 
Sometimes it's just the mood of the food. <laughs> Let me add a little bit more. This is still way too dry. I'm going to add another small increment and then, um, you know, use my hands. All right. Just like that. I'm going to see how well this holds together and distribute the, um, the moisture and the flour accordingly. I'll probably need a little bit more liquid, but I'll see. It's very much a touch and feel thing. All in all, I used about half a cup of uh, water in uh, about three increments. Basically, you want it to, um, the dough to hold together and not have like a lot of uh, dried stuff at the bottom. So, since I'm gonna be using this as my pie dish, I'm gonna grab a piece of parchment paper and make it big enough to cover this. And there we go. I'm going to roll the um, pie crust out on this uh, parchment paper. So I'm going to take some um, flour, just a small amount, and put it on the parchment paper. Spread it out a little bit. And I'm going to take uh, half of this dough and put it on top. You can use the whole dough too, but as I said, I'm using a small um, pie plate type thing, so I won't need the entire um, bunch of dough there. Get your rolling pin and just start rolling it out into a circle. Just turn it and twist it. Do what you need to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. What we want is that rustic edge. And if it's not going perfectly, you can set, cut some pieces off another area and just patch like that. It's no big deal. It's a pie, not brain surgery. This is good enough. And if you find cracks, you can just take your fingers and kind of um, push them together because you don't want cracks. You don't want the pie filling disappearing. All right, here's the good part. There's no scraping this off or doing anything like that. You simply lift your pie crust, your galette crust that's on the parchment paper, and you just put it directly on the parchment paper into whatever receptacle you want to use for uh, using this cast iron one. Just like that. What do you say? Pretty good, isn't it? I'm going to be using a mincemeat filling for this one. As I said before, one can of uh, Dollar Tree pie filling fits this size pretty good, but I have this I want to make, so I'm going to be using it. Basically, you just dump out the amount you want into the pie filling, just like that. It can be more or less. That looks about right because you want to um, take the sides over the top. And this is how you do that. Just draw your parchment paper over and peel that crust off just like that. Comes off so nice and easy. Make sure you have sealed that pretty well. It's not gonna be even, but it's a galette, not a county fair pie, so don't worry about it. It'll look awesome when it's done. See some holes there. If you have too much uh, filling, as I might have here, you can always take it out. So I'm just going to finish piecing together these uh, little cracked areas, and I'll be right back. Now that looks like it's going to hold together, and even if it doesn't, we still have the uh, parchment paper to collect any extra liquid that might spill out or issues like that, and it'll keep the uh, pie plate or whatever you use underneath clean. I like to have something sparkly around the edge, so I'm going to use some of the cinnamon and sugar from Dollar Tree and just sprinkle the... Um, the visible part of the crust like that. All right, into the oven at 350. And here they are. Aren't they beautiful? I bake for about half an hour or until the uh, crust is crispy and brown and kind of has a hollow sound when you tap it and they know it's cooked through. I ended up making the uh, one sort of relatively large one using half the dough. And then I split the other half of the dough and made two little ones. So the beauty of using this 
homemade galette dough is that you can uh, pretty much customize the size of your pies. And the final great thing about this parchment paper is when it's time to transfer it from the um, pie pan to a plate, you just lift it up like this, and there you go.